Okay, today we're going to learn how to simulate a random dot using an S parameter model. So here I have the Advanced Design System 2017 open and I'm going to create a new schematic. I'm going to call the new schematic some random name dot underscore SP and create the schematic. In this schematic, I'm going to go to the simulation S parameters block. I'm going to add two terminals into the schematic. They should be labeled number one and two. I'm going to ground both terminals. I like to make sure that the nodes are not connected physically so that I can see if a wire made contact. And then I'm going to add a data item. I'm going to navigate to a transistor model. So here I have a collection of S parameter models of an Infineon BFP 520F transistor. I'm going to grab one of the models. It doesn't matter for the time being. We're just going to show you how to run the simulation. This is a touchstone format model, and all these things should be populated automatically. It should have touchstone as the file type, and it should have number of ports equals two. Almost everything else we can just leave uh, generic. If you want to check the file or the data file itself, you can see the raw numbers by clicking check view data file or check view S parameters. Here we're going to hit OK. Okay, we can now finish wiring up the schematic. You'll notice that the data item went from having one port to two ports when we named or when we added the file that had a two port uh, data file inside of it. Okay, we can go back to the S parameters tab and we need to add a simulation controller. We're going to add an SP simulation controller now. And we're going to simulate this from, say, 500 megahertz to, say, 2 gigahertz. And we'll have a moderate step size of, say, 0.1 gigahertz for the time being. Okay. Now, when this is all set up, we can save our schematic and we can click the sprocket here which means to run the schematic a plot window should open up and we can add some plots of the s parameters so here we're going to add a smith chart for s11 We'll add another Smith chart for S22. And then we'll add a couple of rectangular plots. One rectangular plot for S12. And we'll plot this in DB. And another rectangular plot for S21. And we'll also plot this in DB. If we hit this four arrow button, it will expand the window to fit everything, and we can move everything around to make it look a little bit nicer. So one of the interesting things is you can immediately see the S parameters of the file. You can see the S11 looks a bit capacitive. It's in the capacitive portion of the Smith chart. Same with the S22. You can see that the amplifier has some gain, S21, and it has a fairly good amount of isolation, or reverse isolation, which is nominally S12. We're going to insert a new page, and we're going to call this page Stability.
as we begin to match the transistor, we're going to determine first whether the transistor is unconditionally stable or only conditionally stable. If it's unconditionally stable, matching is typically fairly easy, but if it's conditionally stable, there will be a few extra steps involved. In order to determine unconditional stability, we need to plot the determinant of the S-parameter matrix, which is S11 times S22 minus S12 times S21, as shown here. And then we need to plot this Rolle stability criteria, or otherwise known as the K factor, which is shown in this equation. I'm going to add those to ADS right now. To add an equation in the plot window, we click this button EQN and place an object into the window. Under enter equation here, we can type an equation. Here I've typed the determinant. I've labeled this delta S11 times S22 minus S12 times S21. I've hit OK, or I'll hit Apply. If everything's OK, we won't see any errors. If it's not, we will. Here you can see the equation is fine and evaluated. Uh, when it evaluates, the equation block will be in black. If it doesn't evaluate, it will be in red. That'll tell you there are some errors. We can add a rectangular plot window, type the name of our equation, and click Add, and add it to the plot. And we can see the value of delta as a function of frequency. I'm going to add one more equation, which is the Rolet stability criterion, or the K factor. I'm going to type that really quick. Here you can see I've typed the Rolet stability criterion, or the K factor, in, and hit apply. I don't see any error. I'll hit OK. And now you can see again the equation is shown here. Now I'm going to add this K factor to the plot we just made. And expand out. Now what we're going to learn is that if the K factor is greater than one and delta is less than one, then the amplifier is unconditionally stable. But if the K factor is less than one, then we have potential for instability. We'll have to learn how to design an amplifier with potential for instability where the K factor is less than one, and we'll deal with that in a lesson very soon. But for the time being, we've now seen how to plot S parameters and look at the basic stability criterion. Now, it should be pointed out that there is an additional stability criterion that doesn't require us to look at both K and delta, and it's called the Edwards-Sinsky stability criterion, or the mu factor. The mu factor is shown in this equation right here. And I'm going to put this into ADS very quickly. OK, I've added an, an equation called mu underscore factor here. And it's according uh, to the equation that I just showed you. Now, note that ADS actually automatically calculates the mu factor. So this is an excess step. I'm just showing you how to enter another equation. Uh, and to plot the mu factor. We hit OK. I've already also put this onto a rectangular plot. Now, mu factor does not require two equations in order to determine if something is stable. The mu factor includes uh, both criterion uh, in it. And what mu factor tells us is if mu factor is greater than 1, then the amplifier is unconditionally stable. Now, I've plotted mu factor here, and you can see that mu factor is less than 1, which means that this transistor is potentially unstable or conditionally stable. And so, again, if we want to match this, it will require a bit of extra work. We'll learn how to do that in a future lesson. For the time being, I will sign off.